tooth morphology. In tooth morphology, basically we talk about a particular tooth. Okay. If this is a tooth, suppose a molar. Okay. Then it consists of a root canal system like this. So the entire pulp complex it is called a root canal system. It is called root canal system and it is divided into two parts. One is the pulp chamber and the part that extends beyond the orifice into the root is called the radicular pulp or we simply call them root canal system root canals so basically two structures are present the pulp chamber and the radicular pulp if we talk about the tooth anatomy then whenever we do some root canal therapy or procedures all of you know that the most critical and the important part is the apical one third of the root it is the apical root anatomy that we have to understand carefully to be able to do the procedures so if I talk about apical root anatomy apical root anatomy okay I am drawing a schematic diagram for the same a longitudinal section of a tooth root looks something like this okay so in a longitudinal section of a tooth root we can appreciate three distinct anatomical features the outermost rim of the root apex it is called AF or apical foramen it is also called major diameter okay the second anatomical feature located at the root end it is called AC it is the most constricted part of the root canal in the apical one-third which is also called apical constriction or simply the minor diameter so two important anatomical structures located at the root end are the apical constriction and the apical foramen now this apical foramen is basically it is communication with PDL communication of the root canal with periodontal ligament or PDL so it is this point that is the apical foramen or the major diameter of the root canal that is detected as apex on electronic apex locator what is EAL? EAL stands for electronic apex locator all of you know that in the modern clinical practice a non radiographic method for determining the root canal working length is electronic apex locator it works on the principles of electricity that is not the topic for today but what I mean to say is that whenever the reading zero or the apex is indicated on the electronic apex locator which anatomical structure it detects it detects the apical foramen or the major diameter not the apical constriction okay and the third <clears throat> anatomical landmark is CDJ sorry CDJ that is called cemento dentinal junction it is called CDJ or the cemento dentinal junction as the name indicates cemento dentinal junction it is basically a histological point it is a histological point or landmark histological means it cannot be determined clinically or radiographically at this point the pulp tissue it ends it's in the apical one third of the root the pulp tissue ends and the PDL begins to so somewhere in the apical one third of the root there is a histological landmark called CDJ which technically means that at this point the pulpal tissue ends and the periodontal ligament begins we all know that whenever we have to do root canal therapy we do the treatment of the infected pulp 
So all the root canal procedures like working length determination, the cleaning and shaping of the root canal and the obturation of the root canal should ideally be terminated at which point? The ideal point is CDJ. So we can say that it is the ideal point or sometimes also called optimal point for termination of termination of root canal procedures. What I mean by root canal procedures? There are three principal steps. The working line determination, the cleaning and shaping and the obturation should all ideally terminate at CDJ because we have to treat the pulp only and not the PDL. Okay. Root canal procedures. Now as far as the anatomical location of these three landmarks is present, the apical constriction is 0.5 to 1.5 millimeter. AC stands for apical constriction. It is 0.5 to 1.5 millimeter coronal to apical foramen. Coronal means it is above on an average by this much dimension. On the other hand, cementodentinal junction is on an average 1 millimeter coronal to apical foramen. The distance of CDJ and apical constriction is respectively 1 millimeter and 0.5 to 1 millimeter from the apical foramen. So we can see that according to these dimensions, the CDJ may or may not coincide with the apical constriction. We all know that CDJ is a histological landmark. It cannot be determined clinically or radiographically while doing the root canal procedure. So although it is the ideal point for termination of root canal procedures, we cannot determine those points. So what is the next best point is apical constriction. It is the best practical point for termination of root canal procedures. Okay. Best practical point for the termination of root canal procedures, apical constriction. Now this apical foramen, which is the major diameter, it has average dimension of 581 microns in young patients or young individuals. Average dimension is 581 microns and this increases to 602 microns in older individuals. In older individuals, the dimension increases. So what we can say that the size of apical foramen, it increases with age. Actually, the foramen is increasing with age. What is the reason for increasing size of the apical foramen with age? It is the continual deposition of cementum at the root apex, which causes an increase in the size of apical foramen. Now, this apical foramen is located at root apex or tip of the root. Whenever we see a tooth, this is the vertex or tip of the root. Okay. So this apical foramen is located at the root apex or the vertex of the root in only 17 to 46 percent cases. It would terminate at the bang vertex of the root in only 17 to 46 percent of the cases, not always. And in majority cases, more than 50% cases we can see that the apical foramen is offset from root vertex. What is vertex of the root? The root vertex is the highest point of the root end. The apical foramen exits at the highest point 
in lesser number of cases and in majority of the cases more than 50% of the cases it is offset means it would be located somewhere laterally so how much it is offset it is offset by 0.5 to 3 millimeter means a pical foramen could be located like this now what is the clinical significance of this the clinical significance is this that because we have the knowledge of the root anatomy that a pical foramen is located in majority of the cases offset from the apex we have to keep the working length short of the root apex that we see on the radiographs why because if we are keeping it up to the root apex we would be actually encroaching the periodontal ligament that could result in post-operative pain discomfort and failure of the root canal so it is offset from the root apex by 0.5 to 3 millimeter I again draw the schematic diagram for the root end and we have seen three structures the apical constriction the apical foramen and the CDJ so this is the narrowest portion of the root canal in the apical one-third that is apical constriction the outer rim of the root apex is called apical foramen and if I mark the space between the apical constriction and the apical foramen okay the space between apical constriction and apical foramen the geometry of the space that is present between these two structures is defined as funnel shaped okay hyperbolic shape hyperbolic shape or shape of morning glory these are the three terms which are used to define the shape of space that exists between the apical constriction and the apical foramen okay. these are the three structures which are present in the apical one-third of any tooth root and the relevant features now we talk about mid root considerations mid root anatomical features mid root anatomical features an important fourth anatomical feature located in the root canal system is called anastomosis anastomosis okay or isthmus the more common term for them is isthmus so what is an anastomosis or isthmus if we have to for look for its formal technical definition it is a narrow ribbon shaped space between two or more canals that contains either pulp or pulpally derived tissue so basically whenever we talk about the root canal anatomy suppose this is a single root of a tooth and it is having multiple canals like this in a single root there are multiple canals then in the mid root area there are connections between these canals and these connections they are called isthmus the narrow ribbon shaped spaces between two or more canals that contain either pulp or pulpally derived tissue and they are called anastomosis or isthmus so the root canal anatomy can be really complex in a single root of any tooth you can find multiple canals and not only multiple canals they are not separated or independent of each other but they could have communications which are called isthmus so there is a particular classification of isthmuses classification of isthmus it was given by Kim also called 
Kim's classification of isthmus. According to Kim, there are five types of isthmus or connections between the roots canal in a tooth. Type 1 isthmus. The type 1 isthmus technically it is a incomplete isthmus between two canals. An incomplete isthmus between two canals. So there are two canals and an incomplete connection exists is called type 1 isthmus. Then we have type 2 isthmus. Type 2 isthmus is a complete well-defined isthmus between again two canals means in single root of a tooth there would be two canals with a complete and well-defined connection between them okay a complete well-defined isthmus type 3 isthmus it is a very short but complete isthmus again between two canals a very short but complete isthmus between two canals so it would be like this the anatomy schematic diagram two closely spaced canals with a very short but complete connection between them then according to Kim the type 4 isthmus basically represents three or four canal openings with complete or incomplete isthmus means in single root of any tooth there are multiple canals three or more canals and with complete or incomplete isthmus between them in some of the canals there would be a complete connection in some of the canals there would be incomplete connection but they are called type 4 because the number of canals in the single root of any tooth is more than 3. Then finally type 5 isthmus. Type 5 isthmus basically 2 or 3 canals without visible connections. Okay, without visible connections means in single root of a tooth you would find two or three canals without visible connections type 5 isthmus so this is a mid root consideration so whenever we have to talk about the anatomical structures present in root of a tooth four anatomical structures you have to keep in mind one is the apical foramen then is the apical constriction isthmus and the fourth is a histological landmark that is cdj or cemento dentinal junction these are the related characteristics of these anatomical structures now we talk about root canals we have seen the anatomy of the root apex and the mid root considerations now we talk about root canals so a root canal system is consisting of pulp chamber and the root canals so if this is root of a particular tooth suppose it consists of a canal which runs down from the coronal aspect and in the apical one third it divides into branches okay like this it divides into multiple branches in the one third. so this is the primary root canal And in the apical one third, there are branches of the root canal. They form a basically delta like thing in the apical one third of the root. These branches are basically of two types. Okay. Some of the branches you can see they establish a complete connection between the primary root canal and the PDL. 
the branches which are establishing a complete connection marked with red between the primary root canal and the PDL these branches they are called accessory canals so what is an accessory canal accessory canal is a branch of a primary root canal which is connected with the PDL this can be present in any area of the tooth so depending upon the location they are called accessory canals when they are present in the apical one-third of the root they are called furcation canals when they are present in the bifurcation of multi rooted teeth bifurcation of multi rooted teeth furcation canals they are sometimes called lateral canals when they are present in the middle or coronal one third of the root so depending upon the location from which a branch arises from the primary root canal and communicates with the PDL it is called either accessory canal or lateral canal or furcation canal so these three terms basically represent the same type of branch that is a complete connection of the primary root canal with the PDL now the other branches which I am marking with blue you can see they are simply the branches of the primary root canal but they are not communicating with the PDL so the branches of the primary root canal which do not communicate with the primary sorry PDL they are called apical ramifications apical ramifications so this is the technical difference between the two type of branches one are complete and communicate with the PDL other are partial they do not communicate with the PDL and are called apical ramifications now if we talk about incidence of accessory canals incidence of accessory canals then again the root of a tooth can be visualized as of consisting three parts the coronal middle and the apical one-third the apical one-third has the highest incidence that is 74 percent incidence of accessory canals the coronal one-third 15 percent incidence and the middle one-third has the least incidence of 11 percent this is the incidence of accessory canals now you all know that what is technically an accessory canal the incidence is highest in the apical one-third that is 74 percent that's why the apical one-third of any root is crucial for doing endotherapy because it is the apical one-third which is likely to have numerous delta like canals and they have to be effectively sterilized by a complete cleaning and shaping of the root canal system okay now if I talk about mandibular first molars mandibular first molars they have typically three patterns of accessory canals three patterns of accessory canals what we have seen till now was the general applicable to all other teeth okay the incidence of accessory canals now I am talking about particularly a single tooth that is mandibular first molars they have three patterns of accessory canals okay so a mandibular molar is something like this which is a curved mesial root and a straight distal root this is the primary root canal system of a tooth okay and this has a single furcation canal what is a furcation canal accessory canal present in the furcation area of a multi rooted tooth so it is present in 13 percent cases single furcation canal okay 
This vacation canal is clinically important also at times whenever there is infection of the pulp. You can radiographically see that there is bone loss in the vacation area without any periodontal lesion. So what is the reason for that in spread of infection from the pulp to the PDL? That is because of the presence of furcation canals. 10% of the cases of mandibular first molars will contain furcation canals. Another cl clinical scenario is that of a mandibular molar. Okay. Which is having a root canal system, the primary pulp chamber and the root canals like this. And then it has something like this. There is a single lateral canal. There is a single lateral canal. We already know what is a lateral canal. A accessory canal present in the coronal or middle one third of the root. The incidence is 23% of single lateral canal and 80% are found in distal root. 80% of these single lateral canals are found in the distal root. This is the mesial and the distal root. You can easily identify the distal root of mandibular first molar. It is a straight root. Okay. And the third pattern of occurrence is that of a mandibular molar having the primary root canal like this it is having both furcation and a lateral canal it is having both furcation and lateral canal The incidence of such cases is 10%. So 10% of mandibular first molars would be having both furcation and lateral canals, 23% would be having a single lateral canal, and 13% would be having a single furcation canal. This is specifically for which tooth? It is for mandibular first molar. These are the basics of your root canal anatomy, which consists of the pulp chamber and the root canals. Now we talk about root canal configurations. Root canal configurations or patterns. The root canal is a complex system which can occur in various patterns and principally speaking important for your examinations are two classifications as given by Wien and what you see called Wien's canal configuration of patterns and what you see canal configuration of patterns according to Wien he proposed four types of root canal configurations and what you see proposed eight types of root canal configurations Questions related to these root canal configurations are asked frequently in your examinations, both NEET and INICET examinations. They can be either figure based or simply asking about the number and configuration. This year also in NEET 2024, there was a question related to the what you see canal configuration. So I am again stressing up that these basics of the root canal anatomy and the teeth morphology are very important as far as your exams are concerned. So Wien's type 1 is represented as 1 means in the root of a tooth there is a single canal from the coronal area to the apical one third. Wien's type 2 is represented as 2-1 configuration. Okay, 2-1 configuration means in root of a tooth you will find two root canal orifice in the pulp chamber floor two separate canals they originate and they join and exit as a single apical foramen Wien's type 3 is represented as two canal configuration two canal configuration means in root of a tooth okay there would be two separate and independent canals running parallel 
to each other and terminating as two apical foramen. So a tooth can have multiple apical foramen also. And according to Wien, the type 4 root canal configuration is represented as 1, 2. Means in root of a tooth, there would be a single orifice, a canal originates and divides as two apical foramen, 1, 2 configuration. So this is the classification of root canal configurations given by Wien. What you see further elaborated four types and what you see configuration is as follows. What you see canal configurations. According to what you see, the type 1 was same as that of Wien that is 1. Means in root of a tooth, there would be a single canal, single orifice and a single canal running down to the apex. What you see type 2 is represented again similar to Wien's type 2 that is 2-1 configuration. 2-1 configuration means in root of a tooth, there would be two orifices, two canals originate, but they join together and exit as a single apical foramen. Two one configuration. So type one and type two are same with both veins and vertices classification. Vertices type three is different. That is one to one configuration. One to one configuration means. In a root of a tooth, single orifice is found. A single canal originates with bifurcates and these two canals again join and exit as a single apical foramen. That is one, two, one configuration. Okay. What you see type 4 is represented as two canal configuration. Two canal configuration means in the root of a tooth there would be two separate and independent canals exiting as two apical foramen which is like what you see type 3 sorry veins type 3. Then we have what you see is type 5 is represented as 1-2 configuration. 1-2 configuration means in the root of a tooth, single orifice, a canal originates and divides and bifurcates as two of separate apical foramen. Then what you see, type 6 is represented as 2-1-2 canal configuration. 2-1-2 canal configuration means if we talk about root of a tooth, we will find two orifices, two separate canals originate, they join together and then again divide and exit as two apical foramen. What you see type 7 is represented as 1, 2, 1, 2 canal configuration. 1, 2, 1, 2 canal configuration means in the root of a tooth there is a single orifice coronally visible a canal originates divides into two they would join together and then again divide and exit as two apical foramen 1, 2, 1, 2 configuration. These are the seven types of configurations. The final one, the type 8 according to what you see, is represented as canal configuration. Means in the root of a tooth, we are talking about single root, okay, root of a tooth we will find three coronal orifices, three canals originate and they terminate as three separate apical foramen. These are the eight types of canal configurations given by what you see. And maxillary, second premolar. Maxillary second premolar is the tooth that shows all eight canal configurations according to what you see. Which tooth has shown all the possible eight canal configurations? Maxillary second premolar. 
there are other schemes of classifications also like certain Bearley's classification they added another 17 to 19 new subtypes of canals then gulabi wala classification but those classifications are quite complex and questions related to them never come into your exams so two important schemes of classification that you have to remember are the Wien's and the Vertusi scheme of classification. Now we talk about individual canal anatomies. Canal anatomy and variations. Up till now we have seen the general anatomical aspects of the root canal and the tooth root. The first group of teeth are mandibular incisors. Mandibular incisors. Okay. All of you know that usually usually means in the majority of cases they are single rooted teeth. Isn't it? Mandibular incisors, they are single rooted teeth. And the canal configuration. In majority of the cases, 70 to 75 percent cases. Okay. It would be about type 1 configuration. According to what you see. Type 1 means the root would be containing a single canal. Now the variation if we talk about in the root canal anatomy, the most common variation is two canals. How are these two canals defined? One is a labial canal and another is a lingual canal. So if this is the labial lingual view of a mandibular incisor, it would be having root canal anatomy like this okay what anatomy one two one so what is the most common variation of root canals in two canal forms of mandibular incisors it is the one to one configuration okay so most common variation is what you see type three variation which is one to one configuration of two canals there are two canals but normally there is a single orifice they divide into two and then again join and exit a single apical foramen I am talking about mandibular incisors and the incidence of two canals is quite high overall ranges from 22 to 40 percent for mandibular incisors if we have to make a comparison between the central and the lateral incisor for the root canal variation then the central incisor has a greater incidence of variable anatomy as compared to lateral incisor but what is the overall incidence overall incidence is 22 to 40 percent of two canals and what is the most common configuration of the variation of root canal anatomy it is the type 3 configuration of what you see 1 to 1 The second group of teeth are mandibular canines. Mandibular canines. These mandibular canines they have the highest incidence of atypical canal anatomy. Atypical canal anatomy in anterior teeth if we talk about both the maxillary and the mandibular teeth taken together the mandibular incisors canines and maxillary incisors and canines the mandibular canines have the highest incidence of multiple or accessory canals okay amongst the anterior teeth overall two root form can be there not only the canal anatomy they can have all two roots also the incidence of two root is 1.9 percent 
usually you know that canine is a single rooted tooth we are talking about the variations in the root canal anatomy they can have variations in the root canal anatomy as well as the number of roots also so incidence of two roots in mandibular in canines is 1.9 percent in the variation of root canal anatomy they have the highest incidence of variations or atypical anatomy amongst all anterior teeth remember anterior teeth then we have mandibular first premolar mandibular first premolar is a tooth usually with a single root and single canal but this tooth has the highest incidence of variable root canal anatomy amongst all teeth means in the entire oral cavity which tooth has the highest incidence of variations in the root canal anatomy it's the mandibular first premolar highest incidence of variable root canal anatomy and because of such high incidence of variable root canal anatomy root canal procedures fail very often in mandibular first premolars and they are called endodontists enigma they are called endodontists enigma okay mandibular first premolars they also have at times two roots okay instead of a single root they have two roots and the extra root of mandibular first premolar it is called tomes root what is the extra root called it is called tomes root so mandibular first premolar which usually is a tooth like this would be having an extra root two rooted form this extra root is called tomes root T O M E S terms root of mandibular first premolar. Okay. Then we talk about mandibular first molar. Mandibular first molar in a routine or a usual manner, it has got two roots and three canals isn't it it is a usual finding the mesial and the distal root and the mesiobuccal this mesolingual and the distal roots root canals two roots and three root canals are there variations if we talk about the first variation is in the number of roots that is one extra root is present instead of two there would be three roots in the mandibular first molar this extra root when it is present it can be either located mesially it can be mesially located or it can be distally located we all know that usually there are two roots in a mandibular molar first molar but it can have three roots an extra root can be present and based upon its location it can be either on the mesial aspect of the tooth or the distal aspect which can very easily be identified in the radiograph of that particular tooth so this is a mandibular molar okay if we look at this tooth it would be having an extra mesiobuccal root extra mesiobuccal root it is located on the mesiobuccal aspect and this is called radix paramolaris and abbreviated as rp radix paramolaris the extra mesiobuccal root when it is located distally this is a mandibular molar mesial root distal root and 
there is an extra root on the distolingual aspect. This is the mesial side of the tooth, distal, the mesial and the distal side of the tooth. So there is an extra distolingual root. Extra distolingual root. This is called radix entomolaris or RE. Radix entomolaris or RE. If we talk about the incidence of RP is less than RE. Entomolaris is a frequent phenomena as compared to paramolaris and this also shows an ethnic variation means if we talk about the different human races the Americans, the Caucasians, the Mongoloids, the Asians then the highest incidence of such extra root in mandibular first molars is with Asians and that too in the Chinese population. So there are ethnic variations also. Ethnic variations also. Okay. Then the second type of variations are the extra canals. We have seen the variations in the roots, extra roots. Then we have got extra canals. Extra canals means it can be a extra mesial canal extra mesial canal extra mesial canal is called mid mesial canal okay so if we look at the tooth the mesial side and the distal side it would be having the primary mesobuccal canal mesolingual canal and the distal canal and a canal in between the two which is called mid mesial canal which has an incidence of 1 to 15 percent okay mid mesial canal the second incidence is of extra distal canal usually a tooth has containing a single distal canal in a distal root of mandibular first molar it can have two distal canals and the incidence is 30 percent of two distal canal so it would be having a second distal canal like this with a 30 percent incidence so 30 percent is quite a big incidence so out of every 10 first molars three of them would be having two distal canals that's why it is very important that we extend the excess cavity properly on the distal aspect so that both the distal canals are located okay now next group of teeth is mandibular second molars An important anatomical variation in the root canal morphology which is seen with mandibular second molars is C-shaped root canals. C-shaped root canals. Okay. These C-shaped root canals, they have a C-shaped orifice. So it is basically a clinical classification if we look at the orifice of the root canal it would be in the form of a C shape not oval or round okay. so these C shape canals they have the highest incidence in mandibular second molars and there are five types of C shape root canals highest incidence is present where it is present in mandibular second molars type 1 C shaped root canals. They are continuous C. Continuous C shape means if I look at the floor of the pulp chamber, instead of multiple orifices which are found in a mandibular molar, usually what I see, I see a single C shape big orifice 
from the mesial to the distal aspect of the tooth from mesial continuous c-shaped canals type 2 another clinical appearance that is semicolon shape semicolon shape c-shaped canals semicolon means if I look at the anatomy of the pulp chamber floor I would find a single orifice and a c-shaped orifice so they become semicolon shape one continuous c-shape and one separated orifice of the root canal type 3 means two to three canal orifice in c-shape the canal orifice are multiple but arranged in the form of c type 4 is a single oval canal single oval canal in the center of c-shape orifice means we would find a c-shape groove and a single not orifice I would say it is a c-shape groove and a single oval canal in the center is present and finally type 5 means there is a c-shape groove there is a c-shape groove and no visible canal lumen means in the floor of the pulp chamber we find a c-shaped groove without a canal lumen five types of c-shaped canal configurations are there they are technically difficult to treat because they are continuous canal from the coronal to the pical one third of the root and the most frequently they are found in which group of teeth they are found in the mandibular second molars so these are variations in the mandibular groups of teeth in the root canal anatomy and the root canal configurations now we talk about maxillary teeth then maxillary anterior teeth that is incisors and canines that they have the least incidence of root canal and the root anatomy variations okay it is with maxillary first premolar that we find the variations it is extremely rare with the maxillary anterior teeth maxillary first premolar usually you know that it has got two roots isn't it a buccal and a palatal root so tooth is like this a first premolar it can have three roots extra root of maxillary first premolar it has an incidence of six percent six percent incidence of three rooted maxillary first premolars then we have maxillary first molar like mandibular first molar this tooth can have variations both in the number of root variations in the number of root means extra root normally it has got three roots a palatal root a mesiobuccal root and a distobuccal root there can be variations in number of root and variations in number of canal if we first talk about the variations in root the most common variation is extra palatal root from one there would be two palatal roots an incidence of 1 to 4 percent two palatal roots and this extra palatal root just like mandibular first molars it can be located mesially or distally can be located mesially or distally so the tooth would be like this it is the mesiobuccal root, the distobuccal root, 
the crown of the tooth, the main root and an extra palatal root located mesially. Extra palatal root, mesial side and the distal side, four rooted form of maxillary first molar or the root can be located distally. The mesiobuccal root, the distobuccal, the main palatal root and the extra root located distally, extra palatal root. When it is located mesially, it is called RML, that is Redix Mesiolingualis. I am using certain abbreviations for these extra roots, whether it is for maxillary molar or mandibular molar. These are standard abbreviations. So what is RML? Redix Mesiolingualis and extra distal palatal root is called RDL or Redix Disto lingualis. So RP, RE, RML, RDL. These are the four abbreviations for the extra roots in the mandibular first molar and maxillary first molar respectively depending on their location. Extra canal. If we talk about the variations in extra canal then most common variation is the MB2 canal. Second mesiobuccal canal which is found in the mesiobuccal root. MB2 canal has a modern terminology called MP canal or mesiopalatal canal. The contemporary nomenclature for the mesiobuccal second canal is MP canal. So do not get confused, MB2 canal or mesiopalatal canal are one and the same thing and the incidence of second mesiobuccal canal is greater than 90% in maxillary first molars. Okay, so a maxillary first molar has an occlusal surface like this. This is the mesial side, this is the distal side. The distinguishing feature is the oblique ridge. So this is the main canal that is MB1 canal, mesiobuccal canal. This is the distobuccal canal. This is the palatal canal. And mesiopalatally to it is MB2 canal. That's why it is called mesiopalatal canal because it is located mesially and palatally to the main mesiobuccal canal, isn't it? If we join these three principal canals of maxillary first molar by imaginary lines, what are the three principal canals? The mesiobuccal, distobuccal and the palatal canals. They form a triangle and this is called molar triangle. So a triangle formed by joining the three principal orifices of maxillary first molar is called molar triangle. The second incidence is of extra distrobuccal canal. Means the distrobuccal root can have two canals instead of one and the incidence is one to nine percent. Okay. So the most likely variation in the number of root canals is the MB2 canal. Then there can be extra palatal canal. Not the extra palatal root, but a single palatal root can have two palatal canals and the incidence of 2 to 5 percent. So these are the variations in the number of roots and the number of canals which are present in maxillary first molars. So when we are talk about the variations, the group of teeth in the maxilla which shows the most common variations are the maxillary first molar. Okay. So these are the basic concepts of the root canal anatomy, the root canal configurations, the root anatomy, the major histological and the clinical and the radiographic landmarks and the variations in the root form and number that occurs. Okay. With this, I conclude the today's session of tooth morphology and canal morphology. See you again 
with a new topic next month. Till then, happy reading and best wishes everyone. I hope all of you enjoyed the session and it was comprehensive enough for you. Thank you very much for being connected with me. With this, I am signing off. Good night.